Right now, guys, the real estate market is absolutely nuts. And to be honest with you, it really doesn't make sense to buy a home right now. There's really only a couple of reasons why you should consider buying a home right now. I'm gonna talk about four or five different things. If you do one of these four or five different things, then yes, maybe it does make sense for you to purchase a home right now. But if you don't do one of these things, do not even think about purchasing a home. Yes, I'm a real estate agent. I love people who buy and sell homes. That's how I make a living and provide for my family. But I'm here to tell you that maybe for you in your situation right now, it does not make sense for you to do this. I wanna talk about the four or five different things where it does maybe make sense for you to go through that process and purchase something. So with that being said, let's jump into it. My name is Cody Steck, your favorite Utah realtor. Thank you so much for watching these videos. If you're a new viewer, I talk about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, and play here in Utah. And if you're a returning viewer, I want to welcome you and thank you uh, for joining us here on this journey of talking about real estate in Utah. So with that being said, I want to jump into this and preface it and say, it might still make sense to buy a home regardless of what I'm talking about here. If you want the benefits of having a secure place, you're going to get some benefits of having a place to call your own. You're going to get some tax benefits. You're going to be able to pay down the principal on a loan. Yes, you're going to pay interest, but that's the you know equivalent to paying rent on a different place, right? It's basically just money you pay and you don't get anything back for it. Um, so there are still benefits. Maybe you've got a large down payment and you've got some money to put down on a home. You're going to be less affected by the interest rates and maybe it still makes sense to purchase despite not doing one of these other couple of things we're going to talk about here. If you're looking at a $700,000 home, but you got $400,000 to put down, you're only having to finance on that 300 and those high interest rates are not going to affect you as much. Yes, you're going to pay more interest because that's just how the interest rate works, but you're not going to be affected by it just as much um, as if you were financing the whole thing, right? Or maybe 600,000 or 650 of that total price. So that's what I want to talk about here today. Number one on our list with the th first thing I want to talk about, if you do this, I think it does make sense to purchase a home. These are going to be four strategies you can use in this market, whether you're working with me or working with somebody else. So the first thing I have to mention, uh, and although this is going to be out of reach for a lot of people out there, and it might sound unrealistic, uh, is to pay cash on a home, right? If you're paying cash on a home, you're not going to be affected by the interest rates. You're basically strictly looking at what the price of the home is. Now, if you have cash and you're going to purchase in this market, of course, you want to pay as little as possible, right? You want to you know, get the best home for as little money as possible. But over the last six months or so, prices really haven't changed all that much here in Utah, and they've been mostly flat during that time. So prices have come down a little bit. There's a chance they might come down a little bit further or they could go up who really knows right there's been numerous reports of people or you know national association of realtors or economists or uh, even the federal government has said hey we actually think that prices could go up fannie mae and freddie mac have said this they said that they think prices could go up you know somewhere between one to three percent next year depending on what data set you look at so a lot of people are still expecting prices to climb into next year on some areas and some homes and you know different neighborhoods and stuff prices are going to drop so you might have to wait for that it's really going to be nuanced there's a lot of details here but if you have the ability to pay cash, it will probably still make sense for you to purchase a home. You get the benefit of just moving into a home, not having to worry about moving again. You don't have to worry about a landlord or anything else. You pay the cash, you've got a place and you don't have to worry about anything, right? So obviously that might sound out of reach for a lot of people, but you might be surprised to hear that roughly one out of three transactions in the market right now is all cash. So there are a lot of cash buyers out there. You might be one of them. Um, for most people, they're going to be financing at least two thirds of people. But again, one third of people right now are paying cash for homes and that makes sense. Number two on our list is a thing that we're going to talk about here, which is also very common, um, and that's going to be to find an assumable loan. There are some loans out there that have low interest rates on them that are actually going to be assumable by a new purchaser for that property. So if you can find a seller who has an assumable loan, you can go in, you can purchase that property and actually take over the interest rate that that person has on their loan. So maybe they've got a 3% interest rate rather than buying that home at $500,000 purchase price at an 8% interest rate, you now pay 500,000, but you get it at 3% interest rate and you get a fantastic loan on that property. Now there is one caveat to this. Typically you do have to cash out the equity of the owner in that property in order to take it over. Not always, there's some ways around that, but typically that's what they're going to be looking for. So again, as an example, if somebody has a $500,000 home, maybe they have a $350,000 mortgage on it. They're going to let you take over the 350 and you're going to have to come in with the other 150 in cash to cash them out for their total $500,000 purchase price. So there's a lot of moving parts there. Typically you still need a, you know, a larger down payment on a home, not always, but typically you will need a, a down payment that's pretty substantial for something like that. But again, that can be a great way to get into a home at today's prices, even though they haven't really come down to much, um, still get into a great home and not be affected by the high interest rates. 
Now, the next two things I want to talk about here are going to be a little bit more nuanced. They're going to be a little bit more advanced real estate tactics for uh, purchasing property and going through this loan process. So we're going to get into the weeds a little bit here. If you need some additional help or you want more information on how this thing works, I deal with a lot of investors and a lot of homeowners who I've walked through this process and help them find a better deal in the market today. So if you want more information on that, make sure to reach out to me, call, text, or email. My information is here on the screen as always, and you can find it down in the description box below. I love working with people who reach out from these videos, and I cannot wait to hear from you who's watching the video right now. Uh, so number one, uh, well, I guess we're on number three now, but the first thing I want to talk about here is going to be to find a killer deal that's off market. Believe it or not, there's hundreds of transactions that take place here in Utah every single month that never hit the market. When you're looking online, you're looking at Zillow, you're looking at Redfin, you're looking at realtor.com, anything like that, you're going to see homes that are listed on the market. 99% of the time they're listed by a real estate agent, but every once in a while you might find a for sale by owner that's also listed in the spots. Um, however, there are, like I said, hundreds of transactions that take place off market that people don't even know about, you know, that, that most people don't even know are happening. Uh, the way that this works is it typically it can be like a friend selling a property to another friend. It could be mom and dad selling a property to a son or to a neighbor. It could be even an investor who went out there, they started cold calling all these people and said, hey, do you wanna sell your property? Do you wanna sell, do you wanna sell? And they just found somebody directly and put a deal together with them without any real estate agents involved. I've got access to a lot of these deals. What happens is these people will find these transactions. They'll say, hey, I've got a home over here in Sugar House, it's for sale. They want 600,000 for the home. It's probably worth about 650, maybe 700. There's a little bit of a discount because maybe there's no commissions involved or closing costs. You don't have all the headache of the you know selling fees and they're willing to offer this home at a discount uh, off market, right? So sometimes you streamline that process. You can find these deals off market. Typically they do need a little bit of updating and a little bit of fixing, but generally they're not too bad. And you can find these homes at killer deals at killer prices. So if you can get into something where maybe the home is worth 650, but you only pay 600, well, now you've just insulated yourself. You've just got $50,000 worth of equity without having to pay for it, right? You're coming in under the value of that home and you actually get to secure that difference as a buffer uh, for the property, right? So that's another way to get a great deal out there in the market today. Um, there's lots of different ways to purchase it and finance it. You don't have to have cash in that instance, but there's a lot of nuance that we're not going to cover here in the video. So again, if you want information on that, reach out to me. The last thing I want to talk about here is going to be buying a home on seller financing. Now you might have heard the term like rent to own or lease option or seller financing. This is a different tactic where you go out there and you can actually find a seller who maybe has a paid off property, right? So let me give you an example on how this actually works. Cause I think that'll be the best way to really describe what's happening here. So let's say you've got a home. Let's say that, um, you know, unfortunately grandma and grandpa passed away. They didn't have, um, you know, they, they didn't have anybody to give the home to. They passed away and their home is now uh, sitting there. And let's say that their son has inherited the property their son could be in a position where the home is paid off and maybe they don't want to sell it on the open market. You know, maybe the home is in disrepair or has issues um, and needs a little bit of fix up, or, you know, maybe the son just doesn't know what they're doing or they want to get a little bit savvy with it. And they might say, Hey, this home is actually paid off. I'm going, I'm going to go and sell it to somebody else, but rather than them go and get a loan from the bank, I'm actually going to become the bank and I will finance the property to them on a seller financing contract. So what that looks like is you as the buyer would come, you'd approach the son who now owns the property and you say, hey, I'm going to give you $100,000 down. I want you to give me a loan for the property. I'm going to make payments to you every single month. Here's what the interest rate is going to be. Here's what the term of the loan is going to be. Here's when I'm going to pay the loan off. There's going to be some different terms that go along with that, but you'll make payments to the seller rather than making payments to the bank as you would in a normal mortgage situation. So this can be a great option if you find a deal like this where you can purchase on seller financing. You can actually get very favorable terms because oftentimes it can be a win-win. The son can now sell the property, they can collect monthly payments, and they can also get some tax benefits for that. And for you, you get to purchase a home, you can negotiate every aspect of it, you can get a lower interest rate, you could get a super long term on the loan, maybe a short term, you can really structure it however it works for you and for the other party. And you can really end up in a position where you could potentially rather than get 8% out there on a mortgage today, maybe you're only paying 5% or 6% or maybe 7% on a seller financing deal. So again, a lot of moving parts, this is pretty advanced real estate tactics when you go this route. Um, but I'd love to help you with that. I've done numerous of those deals for myself as well as for other clients. And I'd love to help you if you're interested in that. So reach out to me, call, text, or email anytime. My information is here on the screen once more. And with that said, make sure to watch the video right up here and subscribe to the channel over here before you go. And with that said, guys, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.